Hello everyone and welcome to your second royal reading of today, a Thursday and it's a dark and gloomy afternoon here. We've had tons of rain, it's very unseasonal, it feels like autumn has started in the middle of February which should be the height of summer here in South Africa but it's cold, it's wet, it's grey, it's dark, it's very strange. Uh, strange energy around, quite um, fractured, scattered energy and the rain has started to pour down as I've started this reading. Just starting to pour down again, you might hear it in the background. And um, I have the new Palladini Tarot on the tarot table for the second reading of today. I'm doing a relationship spread for the Harkles because uh, there's been a blind item which says that Meghan and Harry have spent multiple nights apart from each other in the past few weeks and it isn't work related the separation so that's the blind item then of course South Park a very amusing episode that uh, was broadcast last night yesterday Wednesday and it ended with Harry seeing the light the emptiness in Meghan's soul and uh, leaving so that he could live the life that he wanted to live and she didn't follow. That was South Park seeing that that was how it was all going to end. Lady C of course was inundated with um, rumours and uh, news, tips that the Harkles were separated at the end of last year inundated with things she didn't know quite what to make of it and then it all suddenly dried up and went quiet. So there was that. I am seeing in the readings that I do, I'm seeing things like the lovers in reverse, the tower, justice card, those are classic divorce cards. I'm seeing them on Harry's side more than Meghan's. Um, although the energy of course uh, rises and falls. And um, I've just done a Valentine's Day reading for them as a couple and it was pretty grim uh, even though the sun came out as a signifier for their relationship and the sun of course is illumination, is spotlight on. Oops, um, I'm going to have to pause this. I'm going to fish cards off the floor. Um, but the sun doesn't have to mean happy happy. It can just mean that there's a focus on people and what is going on is being revealed and illuminated and that possibly explains that anomaly in that reading and I'm now going to pause and I'm back and hopefully recording again. Um, I'll keep shuffling the uh, new Palladini tarot and while I shuffle let's remind you that this is a tarot reading for entertainment purposes or just my opinion or speculation. I read on the royals because they're an archetypal family. We can apply what we learn from them to our own lives. And there is a written disclaimer in the box below and I think the cards are warmed up. I'm going to do a standard relationship spread um, on Harry and Meghan. It's a useful spread if you're looking at a situation in your life. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be a work relationship. It can be friends. It can be a business. Anything. When you're looking at, one more, when you're looking at the situation between two people or two groups or two anything, uh, two pets and you want to know how they're going to get on. <laughs> You can, in fact, use the spread, very useful, very simple. Um, it's more open to interpretation than the normal royal readings that I do. The royal readings that I do for you are quite different to the ones that I do in my own life because I try and be as clear with each card as I possibly can. So um, I ask very specific questions for each card and um, uh, normal tarot tends to be a bit more free-flowing. Let's put it like that. That's our underlying energy. That's not a good card for a relationship. And let's explain it to you. If you are wanting to do this spread yourself, here we have past, Harry and Meghan. Here we have present, Harry, Meghan. And you can see I've got two cards for each. So that means that they color each other and we can interpret more freely than we normally do. The energy between the couple and then outcome future Harry and Meghan. So um, I'll, I'll explain it all to you again as I go through the reading. But um, it's a very simple, 
very useful um, a relationship spread. Underlying energy of this spread is the Page of Swords in reverse, which is a rather daunting card if you are doing relationship spread and you get it. Um, not a happy energy, it's people who are possibly not even speaking to each other at the moment. Um, because pages are communication, when the sword is upright, that's talking, when the sword is down, not talking. Might be no speaks, might be uh, speak to my lawyer, speak to so-and-so, don't you dare phone me, don't you message me, I am blocked your number, you know how it goes. Um, that's sort of, uh, it's a bit teenage, I'm getting that energy because it's a June of juvenile energy, so it's that, I'm going to block you, I'm not going to answer, um, I'm going to delete all your messages. It's, it's giving me that quite infantile energy. Um, and uh, it's making me want to giggle as well. Um, but anyway, uh, it's no speaks. Uh, it's being on high alert, being braced for something that's coming. Uh, it's being also very strategic. I'm seeing this card a lot in readings that I'm doing at the moment. Um, and at the moment, we're very focused on Harry and Meghan because they are in the news a lot at the moment. Um, so let's have a look. Harry. Harry in the past, recent past, um, how did he feel in his relationship? We've got the hanged man. Um, he felt victimized. He felt powerless. He felt like he was in limbo. Um, and he was having a big think recently. He's been having a big think and a bit of an enlightenment, a bit of an awakening there as he's been hanging from that tree. He feels that he is powerless in this relationship. He has felt that in the past, that he's powerless, he's victimized, um, he's had to sacrifice a lot. The hanged man is a person, it's Pisces energy, it's Neptune, somebody who sacrifices, um, who gives up a whole lot for their relationship. And uh, he has. He's given up his family, his status, his. Um, he may even give up his titles. There's a whole lot of stuff that he has given up in order to keep his wife happy. And I don't have to say allegedly, in my opinion. It's there, objectively. We can all see how much he has given up. Um, but there, as he's been dangling there in limbo out in California, he's been having a think. Interesting. How has she been? in the past. How has she been feeling about this? She's been hanging out with friends. She has possibly been hanging out with people at uh, places that we know she likes to hang out at. Um, in the old days it was Soho House and her friends at Soho House. One friend in particular is coming into my mind, the friend from Soho House. But um, I would say she's been away from home quite a lot partying. Could even be at a place like the Beverly Hills Hotel. Uh, where she is known uh, to frequent on business. <clears throat> um, but hanging out, uh, partying, drinking, socialising, trying to make friends with Jennifer Aniston uh, and things like that. This is not focused on your relationship energy. This is having a good time energy, very much. Um, so now the current energy, we're going to look at Harry first. These are the cards for Harry, the Two of Pentacles and the Eight of Cups in reverse. So trying to prioritize, trying to juggle, trying to balance a situation that he feels stuck in with the Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups would like to leave very much, consistently getting that message from Harry now. He wants out, but he's stuck. He can't leave yet for some reason. There's too many deals. Twos are partnerships, deals, decisions, um, ventures. He's got, he's too, there's too much at play, at stake uh, at the moment for him to just walk away from Megan. They've got deals that they've got to work out. They've got Netflix. They've got book deals. They've got things. Um, they're, they're a brand. You can't just walk away from the brand, much as you might like to. It's my merching card when I do these royal readings, the Two of Pentacles. Um, see my wares. This is what I have to offer. This is what I have for sale. There's next um, a new improved version of Spare or Wear, as South Park called it. Did make me laugh that. He's got the soft cover coming out in a few months' time. He's got things to do. He can't just ditch the relationship and ditch the brand much as he might want to, and he does want to. Toxic, eight of cups in reverse. Ooh, it's painful. It's painful to be still in that marriage. How's she right now? 
in the marriage. She's moving on with the chariot. She's very ambitious. Oh, <laughs> she's starting something new. Chariot and the Ace of Cups. She's got someone in her sights that is not her husband, in my opinion. Now we're going to stick in some alleged leaves, and this is me speculating. The chariot is politically ambitious. Um, there are vacancies in California, uh, apparently, in politics. And uh, we know that she has been spending time with quite an influential and uh, wealthy benefactor in California who's very well connected to uh, the faction that Megan supports in American politics. And uh, I did a reading on that recently and I got a very interesting card in that, which was the Six of Cups. And unbeknown to me, and I wondered, I speculated in that reading if there had been a bereavement. And yes, I didn't know because I don't know much about that family in America, that very wealthy family, but unbeknown to me, there have been two sons lost to uh, drink and drugs apparently. Um, if uh, what I read, if I'm remembering it correctly when I went looking and uh, she allegedly knew one of them. So that would explain the Six of Cups in that reading. If you watch that reading, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, it's all a mystery. But here we have a political card, an ambitious card driving forward with her plans, a new beginning, an Ace of Cups, something very emotional, something she really, really wants and could be connected to somebody that she's sharing some kind of emotional bond with. We're going to have to read on that story again. It's on my to-do list. I haven't felt like I needed to do it, but oh dear, I do need to do it. Everybody has kind of dismissed her ambitions and said, no, uh, not a snowball's chance in hell of um, getting anywhere now. Uh, those seats are booked. The people are um, earmarked for those places. She doesn't have a hope, but mm -hmm. tell her that with those cards. Um, so what's the energy between them? I've got the Five of Wands, which is a conflict card. It is in reverse. Ooh -hoo. Wow. Wow. Ooh, it's taking my breath away. Five of Wands, conflict fighting, you can see that. It's always, as I say, ad nauseam. It's fighting in a little group, fighting in a family, fighting in a business, fighting in a marriage, Five of Wands. I'm reading the card. They're exhausted because it's in reverse. They are just sick to the back teeth of all the conflict, all the fights. Hence the alleged separation, the rumored separation. Uh, and it gets like that eventually if you've been in a relationship that's gone toxic um, and eventually you just get tired of all the fights and all the bad energy and the bad vibes and either you re restart from scratch or you go away. And we've got the Three of Swords to um, clarify that card, to colour it. That is the card of heartbreak, betrayal. There could be third parties in here. I did look at that in that Valentine's Day reading. And I got that maybe they'd uh, they tried but hadn't worked out. I, I didn't get that energy. I don't get it even here. I get it different because it's got the Chariot, which is a political card. I get a different vibe from this Ace of Cups than I normally would. But she is emotionally invested somewhere else. My reading of this card, my interpretation, my reading of the energy. But here between these two, the worst possible card in a relationship, the Three of Swords, because that is betrayal, that is heartache, that is pain that does not go away. And it's come from all this conflict that just goes on and on and on and on between the pair of them and around them. Because it's not only the two of them that are fighting with each other, but they're fighting with their families. They seem to have fallen out with all their employees. They've fallen out with Sunshine sex by the sounds of things. They have fallen out with all of Hollywood. They have fallen out with everyone. And it has left pain and betrayal and heartache. Future outcome, Harry first. Uh, he's going to get on with his work, with his life, with making money, um, possibly even turning up and doing his duty back to work. And that's a pretty male solution to things like this. Well, I'll just work very hard. Um, I'll write another book. 
um, I'll do whatever. I'll go and be the best chimper I possibly can be. Um, but yeah, he's going to be very focused on his work. This is not focused on fixing the relationship. This relationship is broken beyond repair. But busy, busy, busy. He's going to distract himself with busyness because they're still in it together. They're not in it emotionally. It's finished between them, but they're in it together as a brand. So he's going to be very focused on that and um, doing what he's got to do because now he's a working man. Um, although in South Park, they thought that he didn't even have a job. How's she, what's she going to be doing in the future? Queen of Pentacles, she's also, she's going to be very, very focused on making herself look good in terms of being very abundant, very grounded, very successful, um, very charitable, very humanitarian, a, a very good mother, um, a good wife. They're going to put a brave face on this for, the, for a while at least. They have to because of the brand. Can't walk away. We know that. Um, and uh, this won't go so well, I don't think, if, oh, by the way, I'm getting divorced. I don't think that that's going to be such a good energy to bring into a whole new uh, political campaign uh, if she goes that road. But uh, he's going to be just work, work, work. And she's going to be, I'm so good. I'm so stable. I've got everything. I'm living the life of Larry. Um, I'm so kind. I'm so ger generous and um, philanthropic and all the rest of it. Um, I'm a perfect wife. I'm so loyal and supportive and devoted to him. So kind, so generous. I'm so Catherine or Princess Kate, as she likes to call her. I'm just that. Uh, she's going to be doing her best to emulate and uh, it might be a bit um, revolting to see, uh, but that's what's going to be going on. Uh, we're not getting a huge big uh, divorce energy there. Not yet. That is your reading. That was interesting. And uh, I will follow up on that when I can face it. And uh, so thank you as ever for watching and for your support. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you again soon.